This looks like it's more cow friendly. I feel like a proper regen mob grazer. Since when have you been Mexican? Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Last week you will remember that I teased you right at the end of the video with a little demo that we've got and I'm very excited by this. I've got the keys in my hand. Some of you will remember that a couple of weeks back we had a little bit of Polaris trouble and that has continued, I'm sorry to say, but that's meant we've got something a little bit different on demo. Now I feel a little bit like a professional at this job because Jeremy Clarkson has got one of these and so has Ollie Bloggs. So I'm up there with the best of them, obviously. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Corvus Terrain DX4 1000 Cab. That's a very catchy name. And we've got this on demo because we want to try something a bit different to a Polaris. We can't get hold of a Polaris. It seems to be absolutely impossible. So we thought we'd try this out. We've heard really good things about it. A lot of people have said that it's great. And it's now kind of our turn to really put it to work and see how we get on with it. Because we use this thing so much. It is out of the yard constantly. It is probably the most used piece of kit, especially during the summer that we have got. Constantly out in the fields, moving fences, shifting cows around, getting cows in. You name it, this thing is doing it. And I'm thinking about hopefully doing some more out wintering. So we're going to be using a bale and roller and that kind of stuff in the future. So this thing's just going to get used more and more and more. So we want to keep it new. We want to keep it up to date. And we thought we'd give this a go. Now, some of you might know that we actually have two of these Polarises that we want to get down to one machine. And that's why we're going to try out this Corvus. So let's pull it out of the shed and take a look around. So here it is in all of its glory. It is an awesome looking piece of kit. It's actually really strong. I quite like the way that it looks. It's a bit more agricultural than I would say than the Polaris, but it is pretty sharp. I mean, looks quite nice. This particular one has got a full cab, so I'll show you the cab. I like the doors, they fit quite well. Actually, what I will say, they leave just a tiny little nick just there. So any mud and water can get out, which I think is quite a nice touch. And I like that that handle is just there. That's quite cool. The cab in here is pretty nice. We've got these little bucket seats. A bit different to the pliers. That's like a bench seat. We've got lights. Ooh, fancy. This one's even got a flip out window. Look at that. Now we're talking. I mean, it'll be nice in the summer, nipping down, getting a bit of breeze in my scalp. This is quite smart. I just really like this interior. Hey, one thing I do like, Plenty of baby room. So I think I can get the carry thing down there with the baby in it, which would be handy because Kate can bring me lunch. And it's got a couple of decent cup holders for your Yeti mug, because you need a decent cup holder for your Yeti mug. I like that the lights all have a little glow behind them too. That's quite cool. It means you can see whether you've got them on or not. As you can tell, we've kind of took some of the stuff off of the other buggy and strapped it on here so that we can give it a fair run out and actually use it for some fencing and see what we think to it. It's a lot higher than the Polaris, which is quite cool. And it's got a flat number plate on it. The Polaris got a square number plate, which means that when you do anything with the ball hitch, you catch your hand on it. One thing I will say that I like on this is the back is bigger than a Polaris. The back is 40 centimeters longer, which is quite a lot. And you can fit a Euro pallet in it because unlike the Polaris, this has a full width opening door. So if we drop this down, just on some simple little clatter catch things, which probably doesn't seem as fancy, but you know, I get it. It's, it's practical, it's good. If you drop that down, look, you've got full width in here, which is handy, isn't it? Polaris kind of has a little bit of a molding so that the backboard isn't the full width. And the Polaris has got a fancy handle, which I will say looks cool, but we've had quite a lot of trouble with the handle on the Polaris. This machine has come from the main man Colin Catley over at Catley Engineering up in Peckleton. We do a lot with Colin. Colin is really good to us. He's let us have this demo and let us try this out because that's the kind of guy he is. He's given us a bit of time to try this out as well. We've had it now for about a week. Colin's always dead good. This is kind of like a new thing for him, the Corvus. So we thought we'd try him out. We know we get good support with Colin. So it's, it's always worth giving him a go. The Corvus in general is pretty new from what I can gather. It's actually owned by Yanmar and it's got a Yanmar engine in it. So you're pretty solid that it's going to be a decent bit of kit. Pretty well built. It's got like a full chassis down here. You can see that chassis. These wishbones down here 
are way stronger than on the Polaris. Everything just seems pretty strong, pretty sturdy about it. One thing I wish it had, if you're watching people from Corvus, get yourself some LED lights. The Polaris has got those and they do look cool. But I will say, actually, come back here, those lights are in a better place than on the Polaris. We've smashed no end of lights on the back of our Polaris because they're on this corner and the cows rub on them. This looks like it's more cow friendly. Anyway, I know what you're saying. James, you're waffling too much. I probably am. We'll jump in it and we'll take it for a spin. So we've just come down to the field to put up a electric fence and we do have to do a bit of a Heath Robinson here with the door because we haven't got all the stuff properly on this to put in posts out. I know I said we've got this bracket on here but when we're putting the posts in as we drive along we need the wire further forward than that so it's kind of mackled up on there a little bit. Dad's the pro at doing this, Dad does this every day. There's loads of grass on here as well. This is a reseed that we did and we've got cows on it as you can see down there and we're just giving them a tiny little bit every day. It's just tons of it. They're the new Gallagher ring top posts as well from Pasture Tech. Awesome posts, absolutely love them. I can't keep up with him because this grass is too long because I should get the mower out. Probably should point out as well, you can get a half door so you don't kind of have that top bit with the glasses which would be ideal for this because we can keep the door shut but uh, obviously then you won't keep the heat in either but it's worth noting and you can have a mesh door as well. If you haven't seen this before as well we've got some new wire from Pashtex. These are the Gallagher ring top posts, these are amazing. And this is some of the Pashtex proper wire we've put on some of our reels because we need a bit of extra wire all the time, constantly trying to improve things. Cows are looking well, looking so fit. Obviously these calves aren't that old either. So what are we now? We'd be into like week eight of calving. So the oldest ones are only eight weeks old. These black ones here and the brown ones, they're all the stabilizers and the others are all Charolais crosses. They look absolutely amazing. This one here, that's a stabilizer. That one's a stabilizer heifer as well. Absolutely love these. Look how tall this grass is. Absolutely mental. I feel like a proper regen mob grazer. Very on trend. Right, so dad's got to the end now. He's gonna put this up and then he's gonna take the other wire up. So I'll stick the drone up and get some footage of him, shall I? Just uh, pulled up on the track on the way back down, show you this forage ride, because I showed you the worst field, but now it's time to show you the best one. Look at this stuff. It is ridiculous. It's like this the whole way across. I'm just walking in here on a tram line. Look how high it is. It's like Cress the whole way along. There's gonna be some serious stuff on here. As you can tell, it's gone to head, which is not ideal, but the weather's just not good for getting it cut. Look at that. It's mad. I think the cows will like it though, especially with this bit of grain and that that they get in there. Can't believe how high it is. Yeah, here's dad. He's the main man for driving this buggy. What do you think to it? I really like it actually. Can't, can't fault it much, I don't think. Very, um, what's the word? Rugged and it seems really good. Back's bigger. Originally, I did think the catches on the back door here, I weren't keen because it got two, but then our, uh, our own buggy, the catch in the middle is a pain in the arse. And I really like these now and they're all. I thought they were pot riveted on, but they're actually all screwed on. Smooth underneath, so we can go over the wires. The lights don't get mucky because they're just that little bit further back. They're not on the corners like they are on the previous buggy, and that one broke the corner lights on. Yeah, I said Both that. Both the two we've had. <laughs> and a demo one we had. We broke yeah, three corner lights on those. This here, the doors don't get mucky because it um, don't spit up because it's got this bit of a, 
I don't want you to class it as a running board or what you call it. Yeah, it keeps bit. everything clean. And one thing I will say, decent mirrors on this. The Polaris mirrors are rubbish and they're constantly covered in mud. Whereas that kind of keeps these clean and you can actually see out of them, yeah. which is kind of nice. Doors are plastic, so if you catch them on your electric fence wire, you don't get a shot. And as Ollie Blog says, they shut like a golf. <laughs> shut like a golf. <laughs> In the front here as well, which is really brilliant. You just press the button, lift the bonnet up. I've yeah, this is quite cool. It's got like a cubby hole under the front. You don't have this in the Polaris, but this is quite handy I've for dumping all your crap in. That you always say. Some sockets, spanners for working water pumps if I have any trouble. All the reservoirs for the washers and wipers, brake fluid. They're all here where you can get at them. They're all nice and clean. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I'm quite impressed. This quite is smart. I actually washed it off the other day and I think it even washes easier than what others do. Yeah, so if there's a reason to buy it, it's that it washes easier. Right, so we're back in the yard now. And genuinely awesome bit of kit. Well worth trying out. It's, it's really good. Forgot to ask the opinion of the most important person. Barley, what do you think to it? It is very good, but I have heard that the front is a no dog zone. Since when have you been Mexican? Anyway, we best uh, get a move on. Come on, Barley, let's go. Shut this back up. Latches. Something satisfying about the noise that a latch makes. Well, now she's excited. The little Mexican dog's excited. Anyway, whatever you get up to this weekend, have yourself a great one. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in a bit. Ta-da.